I'm Sherry Soria and I am here today with Eric Schramm who is the uh, owner of Mendocino Mushrooms and uh, Mendocino Mushrooms is where we at Living Light get a lot of our mushrooms especially the really wonderful gourmet mushrooms and so today he's going to take us on a mushroom hunt. Greetings from the California coast and thanks for joining us on Vegetarianism, the noble way of living. Today, Chef Sherry Saria of Living Light Culinary Arts Institute takes us on a visit with Eric Schramm at the Mendocino Mushroom Company. Eric, who is the owner of this world-famous wild mushroom company and the author of the mushroom book, will show us the ins and outs and secrets of wild mushroom and huckleberry harvesting. Uh, I own Mendocino Mushrooms, which is North America's oldest wild mushroom company. For 30 years, I've been harvesting from the forest, and 25 years ago, I put on my card, Forest Use Without Abuse, <laughs> because this is a, something we're taking something from the forest without harming anything. We go out and we harvest a mushroom. It's like picking an apple from an apple tree. The mycelium is left alone in the ground, and so it'll come back year after year. Some myceliums in Europe, they pick for 400 years. Wow, that's so amazing. So it's been uh, a lifetime uh, achievement to dig and find these, these mushrooms that are back in the forest where no one ever goes sometimes. And you've discovered some mushrooms that are great for culinary purposes that nobody ever ever was using before, like the candy caps, for example. And a lot of our local chefs <laughs> use them for things like creme brulee and desserts, that are, and they're so good. That's why I love doing um, things like this, is because it's a chance to educate people about the wonderful things that come from the forest and in when you work with the forest like that everybody wins the forest wins the people that pick them win the people that eat them win you know the Japanese and Chinese have used medicinal mushrooms for 2,000 years tell us a little bit more about some of the kinds of mushrooms that you offer I know you supply them to some of the best chefs in the world I mean from New York to California yeah we start our season here with a, a local uh, porcini um, of course, it's in Italy. It's a porcini. Here, locally, it's called a gamboni. The only place in the world where they call this <laughs> this, and in the mountains, it's called a bolete. Um, and this is probably the the king of all the mushrooms. It's called the king boletus. Um, the chefs love them. We go from there to the chanterelle mushroom. Uh, then we go to Matsutake, which we ship to Japan, uh, hedgehog, yellowfoot. I ship about 20 different species of mushrooms, about 60,000 pounds a year. Um, generally, there's tonnage of about seven different species, the, the ones I mentioned. also do huckleberries which start here and we have this huckleberry bush right next to us here of course and uh, the reason I have this property that I live on is because of the huckleberries that there are hundreds of wild huckleberry bushes here that just thrive and and when I saw this I said I have to have this property and worked hard to get it and now this property produces about 500 pounds of little tiny huckleberries these are a coastal huckleberry not the big mountain huckleberry and they're the most labor-intensive of berry that exists in the world. And one of the great things about huckleberries that maybe a lot of people don't know is that they're actually higher in antioxidants by far than even blueberries, which are some of the high antioxidant berries. So they're really wonderful and they're called different things in different places. Bilberries in Europe, I think. Yes. Yeah, and this is an area that has is so rich in abundance of forest products. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about the Mendocino Mushroom Festival that we have here every year. 
we started this wonderful festival. Um, I actually planted seeds for it 17 years ago, and 10 years ago it finally came together. And we have a, a week to 10 days of beautiful events, all featured around mushrooms. We have mushroom dinners. The mushroom world is so different in uh, in tasting. Most people don't understand that a chanterelle and a porcini and a, a morel or or horn of plenty, the whole flavor gamut is incredible. And so many people don't understand that. I well, one of the things that really makes my hackles rise is when somebody says, I hate mushrooms. Yeah, and they're, and as general as if they hate all mushrooms and they've really yeah. only ever tasted one. Yeah, and they've <laughs> never tried the, the wild mushrooms that are just mm -hmm. so incredibly oh. flavorful. From, and delicate. Yeah, oh, and yeah. wonderful. And some of them are strong like the candy cap. But the Mushroom Festival features all these mushrooms and, and the chefs will step forward and do that. We have uh, walks that will teach you how to pick uh, mushrooms. We have um, all kinds of events that uh, where uh, you will learn to cook mushrooms. And we'll, at, we at Living Light will be showing people how to prepare mushrooms without cooking, of That's course. true. And it, there are a lot of mushrooms that you can eat without cooking, although we recommend that people uh, marinate the mushrooms in some kind of an assiduous uh, broth or, or water of some kind, salted and assiduated, and that helps to kind of cook it without heat. Uh, but it mm -hmm. is, they are delicious, especially, I really like your, your um, trumpet royales. Those oh, they're, are, they're incredible. Oh, they yeah. are so good. Well, I can't wait to go for a, a walk with you, and I brought my little basket. She's so ready. We can go and pick some mushrooms. All right, okay. we're off to the mushroom mines. Okay, let's you, go. If you're good, I'll show you, but uh, you got to keep it a secret. Okay. <laughs> All right. well, we won't tell anybody. Okay. When we return in just a moment, we'll go deeper into the woods to learn more about how mushrooms grow and how to best locate them. You are watching Vegetarianism, the noble way of living on Supreme Master Television. This is the way to one of my secret patches. And we have a nice little chanterelle patch that grows right in this area. And we've had enough fog that they're growing right now. Now the, these are the chanterelle mushrooms. Oh look, how exciting. The, the, these are the beautiful little guys. You know, I think when you cook them, they have a, a taste like apricot with a bite. Mm. That nice little essence mm -hmm. to them. But th this is one. And you tell the chanterelle family because it has veins underneath rather than gills. The, uh -huh. the, the agaricus mushroom that you get at most stores has the, the gills. Yeah, so, that is a really different look. It has a, like a fold right in here normally. Mm -hmm. with the and the smell is, again, like apricots. You, you go. Mm. <laughs> they are wonderful. Now these are pretty expensive mushrooms when you buy them in the market, aren't they? Yes, these can run anywhere from uh, ten dollars to thirty dollars a pound. Uh -huh. And what you, what I like is to get the price down lower so more people can try them. Of course. But because we're tied to nature, we only get what nature gives us, and so it's hard to to know what uh, what rains coming and and uh, where they're going to be coming at. Uh, the bloom basically starts up in Canada and moves its way down south, and we're the southern tip of this bloom. So it, that gives us a unique little perspective. Mm -hmm. um, David Aurora, who wrote Mushrooms Demystified, the great mushroom book, um, says that California has the largest chanterelles and the largest porcini, that if we're good, we'll be able to find some porcini today, too. Oh, good. Yeah, so... Well, tell me, what's the best conditions for, like, what should we be thinking about weather-wise if we want to go out looking for mushrooms? Well, whether you like it or not, you have to be in rain gear and go out because the more rain, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, the mushrooms growing is controlled by the amount of moisture penetrating the earth and ground temperatures. So, like, the chanterelles now, when we go looking for mushrooms, we don't look Look for mushrooms we look for trees because each mushroom that we pick has a symbiotic relationship with a tree uh -huh. so these chanterelles right now are growing with these bull pine trees I don't know if you can see them in the background here oh yeah and and that's they also grow with a Doug fir tree uh -huh. 
Mm -hmm. And so this is the, um, the kind of habitat that they'll grow in. You know, I've been doing it so long now that I can tell people just to go to a certain spot and, and look on the other side of a log and they'll go there and there'll be a nice porcini growing there. Mm. And they're amazed, they say, how can you do that? Well, when you spend 30 years in the forest being in touch with these wonderful entities, mm -hmm. um, then you learn that, that if there's one here, then there's one over there. Right. And, and they're all tied together uh -huh. in, in a, a natural thing. It's part of the wonderful circle of life. Eric reminds us of the elaborate system of nature and the important roles of mushrooms beyond being culinary gems. Most people don't realize that, that mushroom mycelium, which is the plant that makes the mushrooms, is the number one degenerator of organic matter. That life on the earth couldn't exist as we know it without the mycelium breaking down all the or organic matter. We'd be 50 feet underneath all the dead limbs and stuff that fall to the earth. And in that way, they make soil. Paul Stamets in his great book, um, uh, Mycelium Running, says in one 12, uh, size 12 footprint, which is mine, there's 300 miles of mycelium. That's how intricate this is. And this is all part of the circle of life that's so wonderful. According to internationally renowned mycologist Paul Stamets, fungi, which contains the vegetative portion called mycelium, were the first organisms to come to land 1.3 billion years ago. They were a gateway species and helped to create soil. One of the, the wonderful um, stories I like to tell when I talk is about the truffle mushroom. Now the truffle mushroom spends its entire life under, underground and it never comes up like these mushrooms to, to, to spread their spores. So nature in its wisdom has given it this powerful smell that humans love so that the smell comes up and that the animals then will dig down and, and eat it. Uh -huh. And then, then again, nature has given the truffle armored spores. So these armored spores pass through the animal and are spread when they run around the woods. And that's how intricate nature is. I call this the circle of life. Exactly as what our, I was thinking, the yeah. circle of life, absolutely. And, and that's, that's what I love about it, to be part of the circle. And, yeah. and in this day and age, so many of us have got away from that. Yeah. And it's such a wonderful part that now as nature and, and global warming has been coming back, it's, it's trying to wake us up and show us that we are part of the circle of life. Come back and join us again tomorrow on this informative mushroom mining adventure in Mendocino County with Eric Schramm and Chef Sherry Saria. We'll hear more about the symbiotic relationship between trees and mushrooms, the ever-expanding mushroom, and how to harvest the most labor-intensive berry that exists in the world. And now, charming viewers, Please stay with us for Between Master and Disciples, coming up next on Supreme Master Television. Until next time, may your days be bright and your gentle heart be light. Visit rawfoodchef.com to learn more about Sherry Saria and the Living Light Culinary Arts Institute. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.